I'm, uh, I'm Brian Cosgrove and uh, I'm half of the Cosgrove Hall animation company. Uh, Mark Hall, my business partner, is the other half. It's funny that because people used to think that it was a building, Cosgrove Hall, and Mark had to live with that. that people were surprised when they met him. Oh, I thought you were a building. No, I'm not a building. I think, I think I started in animation, believe it or not. The desire to be an animator was when I was five, because my mother, God rest her soul, used to be quite proud of the fact that I did my first drawing of Mickey Mouse when I was five, which is, I don't know, family sort of tales and so on. And um, so all through my youth I, I was interested in drawing and I, I drew and drew, but <clears throat> never believing that I could ever find myself in animation because England hasn't got a tradition of animation. It's all in the States. Um, and I suppose if, if you want to do something, eventually, somehow it happens. The, the, the first step for me was going to art school. I knew I wanted to be an artist. If I couldn't be an animator, then I'd go into commercial design and do advertising art and so on. So I, I took a commercial design course at one of the local art schools. <clears throat> and while I was there, there was a chap there who was seemed to come in just one afternoon a week. And he said to me uh, one day, have you ever thought of working in television? And I, I thought, I said, well, it would be wonderful. But you know, how do you get into television? You can't just say, I want to be in television. But he was the head of the graphic design department at the local television studios at Granada Television. I didn't know this. And he offered me a, a two-week stint as a student to go and work in the, the graphics department at this television studio. And that, that turned into nine years <laughs> working as a graphic designer. And during that time, uh, the Granada Studios purchased a Rostrum camera because we used to, the graphic design people did all the end credits on programs and they would do promotions, on-air promotions, pieces of artwork that would advertise a, a drama. And it was all very primitive. Uh, just a still piece of art was what you were advertising a, a program with. And they decided they had to upgrade this, so they bought a Rostrum camera and a Rostrum cameraman. Now that's the basic piece of equipment for making animated films. And of course this little thing that the back of my head that had been there all those years said, you could make an animated film now, couldn't you? <laughs> so I started a pilot film of an idea that I got. I suppose I was brought up on all the classic American ones. When I was courting with my wife, we used to go to, we had little news theatres in Manchester. They gave newsreels, but they also gave round uh, cartoons, one after another. I thought that was marvellous. Um, and it was all the Warner Brothers, the Bugs Bunnies, the Daffy Ducks, uh, uh, Pepe Le Pew. And of course Disney, you know, all the classic Disney cartoons, because there's not been a better studio than, than Disney, really, for the things they've done and at the time they've done them. So I was, that was my, my ground, and it all stayed in the head and gave me the desire to try to do something similar. It's, that's, that's a sort of tough one really, I suppose. The first, the important thing is to steep yourself in, in good ideas and good animation. Because then it becomes a breeding ground. Um, if your standards of acceptance of what good animation is, if that's locked in your head, and I, I like to think that was, I like to think that I had 
that, but I also think that all the people who worked for us had that, that their standards were high. David Jason did Danger Mouse and it, it seemed to go on and on and on. I think, I think we were doing it about four or five years, I think, Danger Mouse, turning these films out. But we had great fun with it. Um, and in one of the Danger Mouse episodes, I came up with the idea of taking him to Transylvania. And um, when they were in Transylvania, they met this crazy duck who, he had this mad passion for show business. Desperately do anything, he would juggle, he would do Shakespeare, he'd tap dance, anything to get into show business. And that was what the original Duckula was like. Um, when we'd finished Danger Mouse, we sold it to the States, Nickelodeon bought it and it was successful for them and they came over and said we would like to do a co-production with you what ideas have you got on the slates and we showed them various things and at one point Jerry Laybourne who was the head at the time came into my office and she saw this drawing on the wall of Duckula and she said what's that and I said it's, it's Count Duckula he's a, he's a duck a vampire duck you see that's the one I want, she said. And she wouldn't be moved. That was what she wanted. <laughs> when it went into production, of course, one of the guys had a bright idea of making him a vegetarian as well, which turns the whole business of vampirism on, on its head. Um, when he, uh, the plot line was that when his previous incarnation died, he's supposed to bring a vampire back by giving it blood. But he'd got a nanny who's rather stupid nanny. She's a bit lacking up here. And she used tomato sauce instead, you see. So, and that, that's in the title sequence. <coughs> and of course, the Duckula, when he came out, when he was reborn, he didn't like blood at all. He was a vegetarian, like broccoli and things like that. So it made it more acceptable for a child audience too. And we could be sillier with it. I think if, if a character is good, there's, there's two schools of thought here. If, there is a, if it works for the audience and it's good, there's an argument that says you could bring it back. There's another argument that says it was right for its time. And if you bring it out of its time, you might find yourself rather sad because that excitement it generated back then somehow doesn't hit you. But it might hit a new audience, you see. I, I don't know. It's up to other people to say whether... I'm sure that Cosgrove Hall would love to make more Duckula shows or Danger Mouse shows because we have a lot of affection for them. Um, but when you've got a package of 75 and 65, I don't know. I think I was a good boss. No, I, I, I don't say that flippantly. I, the, the studio that we ran, we didn't run a dictatorial studio. We ran a studio where we were a group of friends. And because we we're a group of friends, the creativity flowed better. I think I'm, I'm proud that the studio I left, that I could go back and I think everybody still likes me. You think they do. <laughs> I think they do. I'm proud of that. The way we ran the studio, we did it, uh, we tried to give the studio as good a life as possible within our restrictions with the people who were supplying, supplying the money. Well, I don't think I'll ever get away from Danger Mouse. I think. <laughs> I think people will remember that for a long time. I, I was proud of what we did with the budget that we had of the BFG. We did Roald Dahl's, uh, we did a film of, a feature film of that, which only got a television screening. But I was proud of that. Um, 
I'm proud of Ducula. I think that there's a craziness there that that rings bells with me. Um, I liked the Avenger Penguins. That was one of the last shows we did that um, people don't seem to remember. Three crazy penguins on motorbikes. I thought they were. I thought the animation was great on that too and the settings were good. But I, I suppose it will be Duckula, Danger Mouse and the BFG. Oh, and the Wind in the Willows. I couldn't forget that. I couldn't forget Wind because it was so classy.